Hello friends, welcome to TechnoH channel. Today we will discuss about life cycle methods inside a React component. It would be a lengthy video because I would like to cover most of the concept in one video instead of splitting into multiple ones. As usual, let's start with index.html file with simple markups. Let's include React Core, React DOM and Babel using script tag. I prefer including React libraries using script tag for learning purposes. However, for products and uses, I would recommend to use Webpack module bundler. Now let's create a division tag with id root. Here we'll attach our React component. As an optional step, let me add darker color styles. Now let's add another script tag referring to lifecycle file. And don't forget to specify type as text slash babel. Let's create lifecycle.js. Here we'll create lifecycle component which extends react.component. I'll define the render method which returns h1 tag wrapped in div. Finally, attach the live component using react-dom.render method. In the right hand side, the text displayed. So if you notice, in a simple React application, we build UI element using JSX syntax, which got displayed on the browser. Life is simple, isn't it? Now let's say we would like to access state field inside the render method. We have to think where we need to put initialize code, and that should be executed before render, right? After initial content displayed on the browser and DOM node created, we may want to call the server to fetch some data. React provides various methods which got executed at these stages. These are known as lifecycle methods. Now let's log messages in the render method and reload the page. You can find render log got printed on the console. Now define a constructor. We need to call super with props, otherwise this reference will be undefined. And print some log information. And save and reload. You'll notice log in constructor printed first followed by render log. Constructor is the first method gets called whenever a component is created. And this method is called only once in the whole lifecycle of a component. Constructor is used to set initial values of variable and component state and also binds callback even handler to class instances. But in the constructor, don't perform any AJAX or HTTP call to the server, which is not at all recommended. And one more point, even though properties are available to constructor, avoid copying properties to the state because any future changes to the properties won't be reflected in the state anymore. Now let's implement another method known as component did mount method, component did mount method with a log statement. After seven reload, you can notice log message for constructor followed by render and finally component did mount gets printed. And after a component mounted on the browser DOM, this method will get executed by React. This is the best place to work with browser DOM directly, so you can use libraries such as jQuery, D3 or any other third-party libraries. And also it is a perfect place for server communication via AJAX or HTTP call. Let's recap a bit. Constructor is used for initialization render to return JSX elements, finally component did mount will be called when the DOM node is created. These steps just explained is known as mounting phase, where components are loaded into the browser DOM and this phase happens only once. Now let's move to update phase. Let's say you are typing some information inside input control, which will trigger a on event. And in the corresponding event handler, will update state using setState method. Anytime component state or properties got changed, render method got executed, and the updated values got displayed on the browser, that means DOM node gets updated. This update cycle continues many times for a one component lifecycle. 
Let's define an input control with onChange event handler. We can implement update city using arrow syntax and inside that we can call this dot set state method. But before we proceed further, let's declare a s2 take with access to this dot state dot city. So if we type anything on the newly input button, update city will be called. But before updating, let's initialize the state in constructor. We have assigned Jaipur in the city field. And in the update city set state method, we can take the value from event.target.value and assign to the city. In the right hand side, you can see the newly created elements appeared. Whatever we type in the input, it is immediately got displayed. Now let's implement component did update method with some log statement. Let's reload the page. You can see constructor, render, and component did mount. These are, these are the part of the mounting phase. And while I am typing m followed by u, you can see render and component did update logs get printed. This is known as updating phase. So for any change in state or props, render and component did update will get executed again and again. In the diagram, I have shown which method got called when. Now after each update, we can perform some check to decide whether we need to render again or not. This will help in performance optimization for a particular component. So let's implement a method should component update. This method will get executed before render. If you change return type from true to false, render won't get executed. See, in the input we have typed Mumbai, but still it doesn't get rendered. Inside the should component update method, we can define three arguments to access state, props, and context. We can decide what to do after introspecting the values. In this example, we are checking whether the city is Sydney or not. If Sydney, we are returning true. That means render will be executed. This method is used to synchronize between the properties and state. This method should be used very less often. This is kept mostly for performance optimization reasons. In this method, you shouldn't make Ajax call to the server. Now let's go to the blackboard. As you know, render don't have a direct access to the browser DOM. All the element got created in virtual DOM. The intermediate stage where the virtual DOM is updated, but before committing to the actual DOM is known as pre-commit phase. React provides another method known as get snapshot before update. Let's implement it with some login statement. If you notice here, this method is not getting called every time any update happens. This will be get triggered after render method executed. There is also one warning mentioning that we need to return something. Let's return null and now you can notice the warning gone. It looks good. This method also used rarely. Mostly used for async rendering and help in resizing windows in that case. We'll discuss more about async rendering in the future video. Instead of null, let's return some object. This return value we can access from third argument of component did update method. Again to recap, the get snapshot before update get called before the DOM updated in real browser. It returns some object which can be accessed after DOM node updated in component did update method. As we discussed, in the constructor better not to copy properties to state. If you need to monitor the property changes and do some action to state or else, we can do that between init and render states. Let's define another method, get derived state from props, and put some logging information. Here also we got one warning, as we need to return something. Let's return null for now, and save a reload. In the log you can display this method log get printed, and update the input field by typing some text. There also you can see this method log printed. This is only one method, apart from render, which will get called in both mounting phase as well as updating phase. This is the only static lifecycle method in the React. Here you cannot access state or props using the this keyword. Like render, this is also a pure function, 
which means for a set of inputs, it will return same output all the time. Now let's add one attribute or property, my city. Inside the get derived state from props, we can access both property and state. Based on latest property and state value, we can make some decision. In our case, let's check if city in the state is same as property say, property value. Then return the object with new value Mumbai. There is one more change to make in the in should component update. We need to return true in case of city is Mumbai, then only the render will be called. Let's discuss what just happens. To start with, we have my city property with value mum and we have type mum in the input text control. Then in this method, we compare current city value with that of property value. If both are same, we are returning an object. Now, this is a powerful concept. The return type of get derived state from props can actually change the state. We no need to call set state method, simply return an object. And this return object will be merged with the state object. This type of merging is known as shallow merging. And the final output Mumbai is updated on the browser. Back to the blackboard, we have discussed what happens on mounting phases as well as update phase. Now let's discuss the last scenario where DOM node created by React will be removed. Now let's define component will unmount method with some log statement. And in should component operator method, let's unmount the component from root node using React DOM dot unmount component at node method. This is for demonstration purpose. In real case, component get unmounted for several other reasons, which were not used. In the input control, if we enter Sydney, then we are triggering unmount operation. Then below method will be get trigger. See in the input, I have typed SYDNE, not the complete Sydney. Till this point, everything works as normal. We can see elements created by React under div with ID root. This is where DOM is mounted. Now type Sydney, and you can notice everything gone. DOM node created by React is unmounted, and in the console, you can see the logs get printed. This method is useful for cleanup operation, such as stopping timer operation, clearing cases, etc. With this, we have discussed most of the lifecycle methods. Only two methods left, get derived state from error and component did cage. Those we will discuss in another video when we deal with error handling in React. So thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a good day ahead. Bye-bye.